I'm a good friend of Fritz, more like his brother, his right hand man. And I met Fritz back in the early 80s, around like 84, 85. I met Fritz, and I met Fritz through a friend of mine named Chucky Keynes, rest in peace. Okay, who would you say that Fritz dealt with uh, more so besides you outside of you and his business relationship? Where, like, was there somebody else that he really depended on besides you in business to handle, you know, various things for him? Probably K Dog. Okay, at any point in time, um, was y'all basically on the same level as far as the extent of the relationship with Fritz? No, we was on two different levels. I mean, could you collaborate? St. K was just a, a, he was just, you know, a person that Fritz would use to take care of a little minor stuff that he needed done. But he was an amazing key player. You know, they, you know he might have been a, a key player in the beginning before I became in the picture, but their relationship wasn't like at that extent like that. You know, people might say it is, but that's all BS. I know. I was living with him. Nobody else in 12th Street was living with him. So, you know, I know. But well, why would, um, you're a new person in the block and he had this long extended relationship with K-Dub. How did you just come in and, you know, move K-Dub out of his position? It wasn't about moving nobody out of no position. You know, I came in the block because, like I said, I had a situation with the police where I wasn't able to go stay with nobody in my family. So I ended up staying with Fritz. He told me to come and stay with him, so I ended up staying with him. So I ended up staying with him all the way till I went to prison for a couple of years. We didn't just, like, live together for a few months or, you know, a couple of weeks. I lived there with him. Me and him lived together for a few years, you know. So I know the ins and outs. I know who, who was real with him, who wasn't real. I know who was faking. And most of them, all of them, was, most of them was mostly fakers, you know, except for, you know, certain individuals out of the block. You, know, you had some real good people that was, you know, really true to Fritz outside of the block, you know. You know, I could mention a couple of names, but, you know, I ain't going to do that. So, at one point again, at what point, when did K-Dub have to take a back seat and you took the front seat? To me, to me, he always was like in the back seat when I moved in the block, living with Fritz. He's never really to me in the forefront. You know, you know they had a little, they had their relationship going, but it wasn't at that, to that, it wasn't at to that extent where he was, you know, a key figure as far as taking care of, help Fritz taking care of a lot of his business. I didn't see that. show about another person that I think you mentioned or that was very close to you, Chuck. Yeah, that's my boy right there. Who was Chuck to you and who was Chuck to Fritz? Chuck, Chuck was, you know, Chuck was just Chuck. You know I mean? He was a good dude, you know what I mean? He, he was a lawyer dude, a respectable dude, you know. He had love for everybody, you know. He was Fritz, he was like, you know, Fritz left-hand man, you know. He was like the enforcer. He ain't play no games. You know, I said that's why you know he was that's that's just Chuck, you know, humble dude, but he, you know he handled his business. You know, he wasn't no hustling dude. He was a working guy, but you know, the love that he got for Fritz and the love he had for me, you know, it was it was, it was beautiful. You know, man, before he go home every night, he stopped by to see me to make sure I'm all right in the streets. Come on, that's love. I'm just kind of disappointed too at a few of his friends that he know from kids growing up with him. You know, that situation happened to him and, you know, one what of them situation? with him getting killed. One individual wanted to go in the Bronx. You know, my man, you know, rest in peace. Dog man Reg, he wanted to go in the Bronx, in the Bronx and find out what was going on, what happened with Chuck. And the rest of his friends from 131st, he talking about, nah, leave that alone. Come on, how you talking about leave that alone? Somebody kill your man. Nobody could tell Chuck, yo, leave that alone, somebody kill one of them. I wasn't feeling that at all. That's why I said, fuck them, dude. That's some sucker shit. That's how I look at that. Well, let me ask you something. 
You did 23 years. You're going back while to crying, that. While crying, I do. Exactly. Yeah. Basically, I was, you know, set up for a murder crime to go to prison where they had a got a crack there to say that I committed a crime that I didn't commit, put me in an area that I never even hang out at. That's how I went to prison, based on a lot. You know, Fritz was running around trying to help me to find out who the person was that you know, told the police that I committed this murder. You know, they had me as far as killing a, a cab driver. If I was making all this money, where the hell am I gonna kill a cab driver? You know, that was the situation why I went to prison. So, how many years did you do? Did a total of 23 years. You sat in jail for 23 years and never said anything. Never said anything while these guys were out here, you know, uh, I guess whatever money Fritz left and then Fritz passed, whatever money Fritz left, whatever money you left behind and just went through everything and basically left you nothing. I mean, how did you do 23 years and just hold your tongue like that? You have to, you know, so, you know, people get put in certain positions sometimes where there's so much pressure they can't handle it. See me, I always learned a, a rule from Fritz. He always told me never really worry about money. As long as you can make money, you always be all right. So, I, you know, I sweated it for a little bit. I ain't gonna front, you know, anybody gonna sweat losing everything they have, but I could get over that. You know, I, mean, I could get over that and move on. What I can't get over is the disrespect and, the, and the, uh, the foul shit dudes did to Fritz. That's the thing I can't never get over. You know what I mean? That's, I look at that, that you, you disrespecting my moms. So, you know, somebody got to pay the price for that one day. That's how I look at that. Come on. Do you feel bitter in any way or have any regrets? Bitter? Mm. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm kind of bitter. I'm bitter. I'm bitter because, you know, the way, you know, these, these dudes profess to how much love they got for Fritz, but they, they ain't never show no real love for Fritz. Come on. Y'all run around every day talking about you. I love Fritz, this and that. You know, Fritz my man and all. He's like my brother, boom, boom, boom. But you ain't doing shit. None of them, none, none of them never even stopped and go see Evelyn, see how she's doing, I buy her a gallon of milk or half a gallon of milk or some a, a, a loaf of bread, you know, just a, yeah, Evelyn, hold this. None of them. You talking in 25 years, nobody did a, a moral of Fritz on the wall in 12th Street? As much as he had done for everybody in 12th Street? Come on. Nobody be on Facebook putting a happy birthday, Fritz. Come on, over 20 some years? And you talking about you got love? All that love was fake. They know who they are. They don't, they don't even saying that they love Fritz for their own personal gain, basically. That's how I see it. You know? Hell yeah, I'm bitter. I don't like the way certain dudes treat him when he was sick. You taking advantage of him at a, you know, you take advantage of him at a time it's critical time and he's in a bad condition. Come on. You don't want nobody to do that to you. You know, that's that's brother, he's that's like family. Yeah, hell yeah, I'm better. They know who they are. Half them dudes don't even know the definition of loyalty and honor. At what point in time did you know he was sick and what was that like? I know he got sick in 1989, so you know, that hurt me because you know, I didn't know what he was sick for, you know, him being in the hospital, you know, in that type of condition. Oh yeah, I was, I was, uh, I was hurt, you know, because that's like, my, you know, that's like, it's like my own flesh and blood, you know, being sick in the hospital, you know. You know, a few dudes go see him maybe once or twice, come on. Love y'all supposed to talking about you have a fridge. Y'all supposed to be going to see him every day. Come on. I ain't, I ain't going, nobody's going to see him every day except me and, and his sister Evelyn. Who else? Ain't nobody in 12th Street that said y'all was going to see Fritz every day or at least three times or four times out of a week. Nobody in 12th Street. Nobody. From Kenny Wilson all the way down. Nobody. Did they know where he was? Yeah, they know where he was. Yeah, some of them know where he was all. Yeah, they knew he was in the hospital. Someone needs to go visit him. Come on. Wow.
When you say disrespect Fritz, what do you mean by disrespect I'm Fritz? You, you, you ain't you ain't do shit to help him. You ain't do shit to really help him. You know to keep him alive. He's sick. I'm telling I'm telling Kenny Kenny Wilson. I'm telling Kenny Wilson to take him to the hospital and make sure that he's all right and make sure nobody know where he's at. He tells me he don't want. I'm telling him take him to the hospital. I don't give a fuck with Fritz. Tell you, I'm telling you to take him and make sure you're right. He don't take him. He don't take him at all. Come on. So you telling me you playing a part of his, in his death too? You, you don't care. That's what you're telling me. You don't care. Because if you care, you really care about him. You would you you would disregard what he's saying and 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 try to put him in a position where he can get the best medical care. Him. How did Fritz's death affect you when you found out where were you? I was in prison when he all passed away. I really didn't. At first, I really didn't believe that he had died. I thought it was some type of game that he was playing, you know, me faking his death and stuff. So it took me a long time to really believe that he was dead. You know, I had a, I had a really beg Evelyn to tell me the truth. And she told me that he did pass away. That's when I really started trying to accept it. But it was hard. It took me a very long time to accept his death. Because I couldn't, I couldn't believe he just died like that. You know, just talking to him, you know, Talking to him a day and then two weeks later, I called and they telling me he's dead. I thought that was a game. Because, you know, I looked at him as, you know, an individual that was very smart. So I figured he'd probably, you know, pull a little Mickey. So, you know, I never thought that he died. It was very detrimental to me, though. It took me a very long time, a very, very long time to get over it. Not really get over it. I haven't really got over it. Just to live with it really you know when you lose somebody that close to you you know that you got that much love for them, it, it's hard you know it's very hard it's hard it's hard to accept it's hard to deal with but you got to move forward you know so you know i learn how to deal with it every day but i'll never get i'll never get over that that's something i never get over I'm going to ask you another question. If Fritz could come back from the grave right now at this point. And he'd say, yo, Ace, let's go kill all these niggas. So, you know, get a chance, cop that book, read it, put it in your collection. And there will be a movie out about it eventually. I ain't gonna tell you the title of that, but you know, you just gotta wait and see. You know.